in his highly lauded study into the cruelty of authoritarian power, Masaki Kobayashi crafts Harakiri, an immensely visceral work and a truly intricate character piece from start to finish. The year is 1630, Japan is occupied with unemployed samurai. These are ronin who wander the land without a job, in what now seems to be a time of newfound peace. Tatsuwa Nakadai stars as Hanshiro Sugumo, a masterless, lowly samurai who enters the manor of a lord, requesting to commit ritual suicide on his property. Sugumo pursues his suicide because of his disgrace of being a jobless samurai. Initially, clan elder Saito tells him a story designed to discourage this, as during the district, there have apparently been similar appeals in hopes samurai will have their lives spared and in turn receive work within the clan itself. However, after Tsugumo insists on proceeding and requests a permission to tell the clan a story, it isn't until the Lord tries to force his hand and get him to disembowel himself that Hanshiro's true motives of his journey to the manor begin to appear. As do his beliefs relating to authority, the samurai code, and his own personal brand of honour. During this time period, whilst Japan was under the ruling of the Shogunite, it was common for a ronin to request to commit seppuku, which was essentially a form of ritual suicide by one's own disembowelment. Traditionally a samurai practice, seppuku was a process that enabled samurai to die with honour. And in the case of Kobayashi's film, this is the request of Tsugumo, who wishes to kill himself in the clan's forecourt. Tsugumo initially appears to want to commit to this process as an act of honour for his apparent lack of self-worth as a jobless samurai, which soon seems to be only partially true as he seeks to expose the code of the samurai and expose the hypocrisy of those who enforce the practice. Masaki Kobayashi began to come into his own during this post-war period, in which filmmakers sought to revitalize a Japanese film industry that had seemingly fallen during the war and occupation years. Following on from directing the Human Condition Trilogy between the years of 1959 and 1961, Kobayashi would once again go on to work with Tatsuo Nakadai, in his morality-driven drama, The Inheritance, released early in 1962, before they would work together for Harakiri later in the year. When asked about the ideas at the heart of his films, Kobayashi once said, All of my pictures are concerned with the resisting of an entrenched power. With this statement, it is reasonable to identify Kobayashi as an anti-authoritative filmmaker which in the case of Harakiri, is a clear criticism and rejection of Japan's previous feudal system. Now whilst Harakiri may appear to address the many issues that relate to the defiance of authority and the loss of one's self-worth, it is the central themes of honour and pride that are the driving forces for Kobayashi's vision. It is important to note that Kobayashi himself was a pacifist, and we can see these anti-war beliefs throughout his thematically consistent body of work. In relation to Harakiri, this belief is present through the many clear critiques and commentaries he provides on the deconstruction of authoritative power. Although the setting and foundations of the tale may be drenched in folklore and history, Kobayashi crafted his film with a kinetic and contemporary vision filmed in vivid and highly contrasted black and white. Harakiri is lensed by longtime Kobayashi collaborator Yoshio Miyajima, who previously worked on the Human Condition Trilogy and Kwaidan, blending point of view sequences, handheld camera movements, and meticulously captured wide angles. Every frame of Harakiri is valued. 
with a varied choice of angles used to further emphasize both character authority and hierarchy, it is clear that Kobayashi's direction was leaps and bounds ahead of its time, whilst always remaining inventive and engaging in equal measure. Harakiri is the equivalent of a cinematic chess game. In his direction, Kobayashi clearly positions his cameras and their interactions with meticulously and carefully constructed moves. This results in a layered and methodically paced tale, and it is this approach that allows the film to lead to its impeccably paced and unforgettable climax. By exploring the many rich philosophical issues that relate to complex samurai ideals and the hypocrisy of a clearly evolving culture. With this masterpiece, Kobayashi used the power of the cinematic form to criticize the present from a view of the past, and the resulting work is Harakiri, which remains one of cinema's greatest examinations of authoritative power and a true artistic tour de force of world cinema. Thank you.